Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA. Select start. Thanks. Oh, man, it's been a while since I've heard that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people all over the world, uh, welcome to the first, what should we call it then, the first quarantine edition of BA Select Start? Uh, it sounds about right. Well, ironically, uh, if you've been following us from the beginning, uh, you know, we first started talking about 2K, uh, you know, the WWE series, um, and then we trans uh, kind of transformed into The Last of Us post-apocalyptic game. Uh, kind of ironic that we're recording at this time because uh, I'm sure everybody knows by now um, the coronavirus has been um, has made an impact and everybody ha has been forced to stay home and to just be safe. And uh, I don't know about you, Dan, but uh, the last few weeks I've been kind of getting a Last of Us vibe. Yeah, you, you you go out and you you see that there's considerably less people out, and uh, you know just the talk of quarantine. You it takes you back to the quarantine zone, and you know social distancing. Something probably would have helped with uh, controlling the spread of the the cordyceps uh, fungus. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it, it's it's sort of a weird surreal thing. Uh, a lot of people keep talking about how. Like, obviously, we're stationed out of Los Angeles, but a lot of people keep talking about, oh, you go outside and you can see that the sky is blue because so much traffic on the daily creates that smog, that just perpetual smog. And with everybody, well, with most people staying home, uh, you, you've seen a, a, a market decrease of that, so... Yeah. Air feels cleaner, looks cleaner. It, 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 it's it's nice, but it's yeah, it, it's it's spooky in a way. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I I was just telling you right before we went on the air that you know it's it, if you look at if you're kind of a positive thinker like I am, and you choose to kind of see the silver lining and everything, you know, it kind of gives everybody an opportunity to kind of pause for a second to not be doing your daily routine and to just kind of you know. Be at home, take a break, you know, if there is a task that you've been meaning to do for a long time and you've just been putting it off, maybe now would be a good time to do it, you know? Yeah, like, like learning to swim or teaching your daughter to play the guitar. <laughs> I swear to God, if the second game comes out and Ellie doesn't know how to swim, I'm going to riot. Um, <laughs> she better because she's your main, your main goddamn character. If she doesn't swim, then I'm probably going to be restricted on where I can and cannot go. <laughs> Unless if there's pallets, but... Um, <laughs> I, I, would rather, I would rather skip that mechanic this time around. Yeah, the, the, they'll probably substitute something else. Uh, I know that they have, like, the squeeze-throughs this year. Um, yeah. You know, they have uh, different forms of, like, you know, uh, you know, getting on your knees and, you know, crawling around and, you know, a little bit more in that uh, department. But, you know, uh, I don't know. Usually Joel would set up that, that pallet and you would be able to go across. Uh, Joel might not even be alive this time around. So I don't know. We'll have to see. But uh, going back to what we were saying, um, right now it's a uh, it's kind of a weird time right now, you know, this coronavirus has kind of been taken over, but we've been taking all the safety measures that we can do. We are now recording, obviously, uh, from a different, uh, you know, I'm at my place, you're at your place, Dan. Um, yes. But uh, we decided that we would be missing an opportunity if we didn't record at this time, you know, during when this was going on, especially since we're talking about, you know, post-apocalyptic games and... Uh, since the last time that we actually record, uh, we've had um, two big pieces of information. One that has, uh, you know, is, is good news and the other one that is maybe not so good news if we're talking about, like, you know, the image of, of, of Naughty Dog or the company. But, um, Dan, since you kind of sent me the first piece of information when it first came out, I'll let you take over. So, what is that first piece of information that we got for today? All right, so... For all of you uh, Last of Us fans that are tuned in right now, uh, you may have already heard about this. And I know, like, this isn't the first time that some project by Naughty Dog has been 
discussed as being in the words in the words in the works for television or film. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there was talk for a long time of Uncharted being a movie. Yeah. Nothing ever got off the ground, and then I, I think they announced like Tom Holland might play Nathan Drake, um, and that hasn't gone anywhere. However, in exciting news for Last of Us fans, HBO in collaboration with Neil Druckmann and I don't remember the other name that I saw, but they are developing a Last of Us television show for HBO. Yeah. So that's pretty like that's pretty exciting for me, and I mean, I imagine that this is probably going to be one of those shows that's shot in like Georgia. Yeah. So that disappoints me a little bit because. As an actor, <laughs> this would be one of this would be one of my dream shows to be involved in, and not to say that I couldn't get cast as, cast from here and then flown out there. But uh, yeah, this this is super exciting for me as both a fan and as a professional. So yeah, and you know, I know that you um, quite some time back were actually uh, trying to do a Last of Us short. Um, yes, which I do still have. And I'm, I'm planning to try and get that underway at some point once this is all over. <laughs> right. But, you know, the funny thing is it's like now, like, I think it kind of gives fans, like, a chance to sort of dive into, like, the, the you know, like, behind the story of Ellie and Joel. And maybe this TV show will sort of do what Left Behind did, you know, when uh, when Joel gets injured and you kind of get some backstory as to what Ellie had to do to save Joel, you know. Um, and I think that maybe this TV show will kind of be sort of, you know, a, a left behind on its own where it sheds some light on, you know, uh, numerous different parts of the story where maybe, you know, there's a cutscene, it blacks out, and then it's like, oh, what happens? Oh, all of a sudden it's spring now. Oh, but what happened between that time? So I think that this would kind of be a perfect opportunity if we're sticking to what happens in the video game for them to kind of take advantage of that and go, okay, well, what, what did we have planned for this section? You know, what would have happened between these two characters? Um, yeah, fill, fill, filling in the time gaps because yeah. there's a lot of time jumps and some of them seem relatively benign, but life doesn't just stop because there's a time jump. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I was just thinking right now, you know, you think back to, a, a spoiler alert for those of you who haven't pay, played the game, um, you know, when, uh, what's his name, Sam Henry, um, when he uh, commits suicide, uh, yeah. and it just, it, it cuts to black, and then all of a sudden we're at Tommy's Dam, and it's like, yeah. you know, I would like to see, you know, what maybe happened, or if there was maybe any conversation, because I know there's one point where Ellie goes... Joel, I want to talk about it, and he goes, "No, things happen, and we move forward. That's it, you know." And I would. Yeah, I, how much time has passed between uh, between Henry killing himself and uh, that moment? Because there, there's there's things that transpired. Is it a couple of days, or is it not? I thought they. I, I think there was a decent amount of distance still that they had to go between where they were. Yeah. And where where the where the dam is. Yeah. So I but, mean, you know, if we're talking about it from a perspective, I would love to see that. But what about you, Dan? Would you like to see more of original stuff that doesn't come from the game, or would you like to see some BTS of what happens? You know, the story behind the story type of thing. Well, and I think that that's where the where the the questionability of this comes from is. If you ask your your lay fan, if you ask your your casual Last of Us fan, hey, what would you like to see? That the, there's gonna be you'll have some people who say I want to see more of Ellie, I want to see more of Joel, but I'm sure you'll still have some people who are like, I want to know more about this world, so I I don't necessarily need need the show to focus on Ellie and Joel, Yeah, um, I'd rather see some new characters. Now, is that something that you would want to see? Would you like it to be uh, focused in on these two characters, them casting somebody as Ellie and Joel, and we follow them, or would you rather that we expand out and we experience new people? You know, 
I wouldn't mind getting a little taste of both because inevitably it's like if we only have two actors taking up 90% of the show, eh, I'm not sure if it would really resonate. Um, yeah. However, if we can maybe even do a deal where maybe, you know, Joel and Ellie, they, they for example, they find a whole bunch of clickers and they're being surrounded. All of a sudden you cut and we go to, you know, two completely different characters, maybe like a, someone like a Henry and a Sam. And then you see what they're doing. And then all of a sudden there comes to a point where they merge and they meet, you know, and uh, just kind of an idea. But I, I, I think that if you add some diversity to it, definitely, definitely, it would be a whole lot more interesting. Yeah, I, I, I would... I would hazard to say that if they take the Walking Dead formula and carry over the story richness of The Last of Us, I think they'll find success. Yeah. Um, it, now, is it going to be? Is there going to be a certain amount of disappointment of in in not having uh, Troy and Ashley? As those characters, sure. Would I would I love to see Troy and Ashley as side characters in the show, as them like <laughs> acting with themselves? That would be that would be amazing. Nice Easter um, egg. What what was that? It would be a nice Easter egg. Yeah, but no, I I think that if you have, if you have, I would almost start the story at some point with Joel and. Ellie and Tess. Yeah. But I know they weren't together for a long time, but I would I would pick up there. And I think your your major catalyst into the universe could be the moment at what the hell was it? Uh, the city hall or the Capitol building? The Capitol building, yep. Yeah, where where we learn that, that you know, somebody is infected. And uh, that's what kind of kick starts everything else into motion. I would start there. And then expand upon stuff and uh, maintain the, the the story element because something I think The Walking Dead started to lose, um, which is why I I've, I've stopped. I'm I'm like a season or two behind on that show. Yeah. Because it just got repetitious. Because um, it was okay. So you got people and oh no, there's a zombie horde. But this is this story has so much more to it than that that I think they need to remember that. Yeah. Um, two points. Uh, number one, I think that by having people from Naughty Dog actually working on the, on the project um, is going gonna, is gonna to help it a whole lot because yeah. I think we've seen it before where, you know, something gets created, but then, you know, someone sort of, you know, a secondary team comes in and tries to make a TV show out of it, and it doesn't do so well because you don't have those same creative minds who did the original. Yeah, you have a creative disconnect because of the fact that you have it, you you have somebody who's interested in it but not necessarily passionate about it. Exactly, um, and so that's one thing. Uh, a second thing for me, and uh, I'm I'm gonna first answer my own question, then I'm gonna throw it over to you. You know. Your idea of ha having different characters, um, you know, I think if there was one character, like if they came up to me and said, hey, look, we're thinking about writing in an episode or two, kind of giving a backstory to a character, but we want you to, you, we want you to choose the character. Who would you want us to do the story about? I would go with David, you know? I feel like with David, you would get a complete 180 because we're no longer talking about someone who's along the lines of do the right thing or, you know, uh, someone who's liked by the fans. We're talking about someone who might actually be, you know, detestable in the fans' eyes. Someone who yeah. tried to do something questionable to Ellie. I would love to get some backstory of, like, you know, um, of, like, David's perspective of, like, you know, him with his crew, what they do when nobody's around, you know, because I know last time, you know, when, when, you know, when we were talking about this, we mentioned how David, you know, and his team, they're into cannibalism, you know, chopping up bodies and, you know, uh, other things as well. 
So I would love that part of this whole thing to be discovered. Now I want to throw it over to you. If they came up to you and said, hey, we're thinking about throwing in an episode or two about a person like of X, insert person here, who would you want to see backstory of and why? Um, I think that the most obvious one that stands out to me is... Uh, what the hell's her name? Uh, it's to- no, to- Tommy and his wife. Ooh, Maria. Yeah, I, I, I think that it would be like I would almost now that we've talked about it a little bit. I would find it fascinating to have all of these groups independent of each other, but we touch base with all of them throughout the course. Yes. And then, obviously, you've got the crisscrossing. So you have uh, Ellie and Joel and Tess. And then we also see what's going on with David's group well before the, they ever meet. And then we also see what's going on with Tommy and Maria over at the compound. Yeah. And then you've got Marlene and, and her voyage across the country. Because she yes. talks about, she tells Joel the story. Uh, we were coming across the country. I don't know how the hell you did it because we we had a hell of a time. I lost so many people. Yeah. Let's see that. Let's see that 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 terrible mm, failure of a of a of a journey and how that affects everybody in that group. Right. No. Yeah. I think by the time this show gets developed. And that might even be be what what happens here is the show might bridge the gap between the two games. Yeah, um, you know. Because, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say you've got the new the new game coming out almost imminently, and who knows how long before that show comes out? But yeah. that's a five year time frame. Right. So there's a shit ton of story just in there. Um, is Joel even alive? If he's not, what the hell happened to him? <laughs> Did he get sick at some point? Did he get kidnapped? There's a lot. There's a lot of story potential just in that time frame that this show could focus on. So we may not even have to revisit the original story. However, I think that they would be making a mistake to not touch on it, given the fact that you're probably going to have people going, "Okay, well, what's this last of a show about?" And then if you don't give them any of the backstory on the original plot, then you're you're dabbling with what Disney has done to Star Wars. And what I mean by that is that um, Disney has taken what started out as three movies and they've expanded on it to the point where now you have to read books. You have to get the visual dictionary you have to get comic books and all play video games and all 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 of these things just to understand what's going on yeah (laughs) so if they don't if, if they just start you off in that general time frame and we branch out across this entire plot up to the second game i think that that that's probably the best uh, the best thing for the people who are not familiar with the game already. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Um, you know, and that's actually like, that's one of my biggest concerns is, you know, ha- not having the TV show be a parody of itself, but <laughs> actually, you know, cause I think, you know, if you, the, the, the trademark name last of us now carries around so much hype. You know, you could say Last of Us, you know, toy, Last of Us game, Last of Us book. There's immediately this big amount of hype that kind of goes into it where people's expectations is skyrocketed to the top, you know? And I think that when you have something like a TV show, you kind of need to take it with a little bit of, you know, grain of salt because while your expectation is that, oh, it's going to be, you know, a 10 out of 10, it might not be 10 out of 10 immediately or probably ever but it's just it's it's one of those things where it's like okay let's give it a chance let's you know play with the idea see what we come up with see what the audience thinks you know based on reviews and you know with because with today's you know social media and technology reviews come in almost immediately so 
you know, that's just one thing to keep in mind. Secondly, you know, I don't know if you ever seen, uh, Dan, you know, before, you know, after Last of Us 1 came out, um, you know, there were numerous videos where Neil Druckmann talks about how they had to uh, fine night the, the plot a few times. Um, like, for example, there was this, uh, this plot point where, you know, uh, Tess's brother, who gets introduced to us, uh, dies, like, at the beginning of the game. And then it all leads to this ranch house scene where, you know, Tess, you know, takes out all her aggression and, you know, faults Joel for her brother passing. And it leads to this moment where Ellie has to actually, you know, come to the, to the ranch house to find Joel to eventually save him. So my question to you is, has there ever been any fictitious or any, like, fabricated scenario that you would love to see on the last of us tv show like maybe a plot point that never happened or you know something that you know you wish could have maybe swerved just a little bit and maybe gone a different direction um for example something like maybe if riley never got bit you know what would have happened you know it would you know would joel have met them you know together or you know would have how would, the story would have changed you know, something along those lines, or if, you know, Sam and Henry never died, you know, like, has there, is there ever a scenario where you think to, and you're like, you know what, I would have loved for them to expand on this just a little bit more before someone had to, you know, die or be infected or something like that? Um, I mean, so that, those are interesting. Um, I know that when we filmed the last, the last episode, that, uh, I think it was the last one where we kind of talked about uh, possible uh, plot points or endings for the second game that yeah. I brought up the concept that Riley may have survived and she's some sort of weird like zombie queen or something. Yeah. Uh, um, no, I think, I think it would have been, it, it would have been interesting to see where the, the lives of these two girls would have gone had Riley not turned. Yeah. Uh, so I think that would have been, that would have been really cool. Cause di- did she turn in a normal time frame Like everybody else, she like, I mean, for goodness sake, you had Sam who turned a day, a day. Yeah. Getting bitten. <laughs> um, uh, another, another thing I, I wouldn't be against seeing is how Marlene came to be the leader of the Fireflies. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Because there, there's a I, obviously, I'm assuming there's some degree of politics. Um, because this not to not to dabble into chauvinism because that's not not my my belief. But how open would this group be to just having a woman as their as their their leader? Yeah. Uh, um, especially in a time of, of a, a time where you need to be strong, you need to be tough, you need to you need to be not afraid to kill. Oh, yeah. well, is a woman the right person to lead us in this time? I think that that's a compelling uh, plot point to follow. Yeah. I wouldn't even be mad if we sort of get the show in uh, sort of an episodic format. Where uh, are you familiar with? Uh, are you familiar with Law and Order? Uh, not exactly. Okay, so the, the well, the thing with Law and Order is that um, each episode is a standalone. They it's a, it's it's, it's, a, it's like each but, episode is a case, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so while there are certain plot threads that carry across an entire season, each episode is sort of its its own story. Right. Yeah. And. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I've told you this story before, but I was I watched an episode one time, and they got to the end, and they cut off as the jury goes, uh, the jury finds the defendant, and I went, oh God, what what happened in the next episode? Because I didn't know this yet. Yeah. And I had to find out what the verdict was, because I was invested in this one, and they never continued. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Cliffhanger. And, and so, in a way, I wouldn't be upset if the show kind of did that, where we got like an episode, maybe a, maybe a, a couple of episodes following a specific 
plot. Like, oh, well, there's some backstory on Marlene and how she came to be the leader of the Fireflies. And we get done with that three-episode arc, and then we go and we uh, introduce uh, a new story via her, and we follow that plot now. Yeah. So it could be an interesting interesting uh, attempt at, at storytelling. You know, that reminds me of, you know, hearing you talk about Law and Order... Um, reminds me of, you know, the very end of the first game, right after when Ellie says okay, and it cuts to black, and you have people who are kind of split, you know, people who go, oh, I think that, you know, Ellie knew. Some people will tell you, no, I don't think Ellie knew, you know, she she believes Joel, you know, he promised, obviously. I wouldn't mind if, if an episode uh, sort of shed some light on what happened with that, you know, what was the deal? Does Ellie ever talk to Joel about that? Do they ever hash it out? You know, um, yeah. or or is it or does it still is it still left as a cliffhanger of nope, no light shed. We're just gonna leave it for you to think for yourself. I mean, here's an interesting thing to consider, and this might be jumping jumping the shark a little bit, but what if, given the fact that Ellie is Ellie's resistant to to this fungal infection. Yeah. Who's who's to say she's not resistant to other things? Maybe she. I I don't remember the name of it, but are you aware of this phenomenon where you can be conscious of what's going on around you while you're under anesthesia? Say that one more time. There, there's a phenomenon where you can be conscious of what is going on around you while you're while you're on anesthesia. Oh, anesthesia. Okay. Um, so no, I maybe, didn't know that. So maybe she heard everything. <laughs> oh, maybe that was she, going. Maybe, oh, I see what you're saying. So maybe she she reveals in the plot of either the Last of Us two or part of this show. I was I was awake. I was awake for the whole thing. Or I was aware of the whole thing. Interesting. And I, and I thought maybe maybe it was a dream. Maybe I hallucinated it. And so I asked when I asked him uh, if everything was was real. I I was trying to get him to confirm for me whether what I what I had heard was real or not. Yeah. And so I think that could be sort of a ooh kind of thing. But again, it could be it could be uh, ex- it could be expecting the 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 viewer or the player to be a little too forgiving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which I don't think that Naughty Dog ever does. You know, it seems like everything has a consequence. You know, kind of going. I'm gonna go back to this for just for one second. What happens between Ellie and David? It's not just something where you go to the next chapter and, oh, okay, like, you're, you're playing the character as if it's default, you know? Everything is normal. Everything is fine. You can obviously see what kind of an effect that, that moment has on Ellie. You know, she's quiet. She's distant. You know, she's not, you know, Joel will ask her a question and she's just kind of zoned out of it. And I like that. I like the fact that they have that, you know? So, I don't know. Yeah, Every- and, and it's like, in a, in a situation like that, like... Okay, she was being essentially poached by this guy in that in that restaurant, but when she gets her hand on that machete, she goes ham. Yeah, like it's not, it's not like she does that one dis- decisive strike and goes, "Oh, it's over." Yeah, she hacks away at this guy, which there's some subtext there that maybe there's a little bit more to what we than than what we're aware of. Right. So, so maybe there's a bit more trauma behind the whole thing, but yeah. And again, it's like if if we're talking about exposing backstory, then I think that this this would be you know the perfect opportunity to do so. Um, I'm gonna quickly throw this back in there, and then we can maybe move forward. Um, yeah. If we're talking about backstory, I would also love to see what happens um, to Dina um, when you know they're both yeah. on the horses. And then some again, something happens, they get separated. We are assumed to believe that you know Ellie comes across you know this old building 
uh, still intact. And she goes in, finds a door with some blood leaking, you know, underneath it. And then we are assuming that, you know, it's inferred that she gets shot point blank in front of Ellie. I would love to see some backstory of what happened when these two characters got separated, you know? Yeah. So, um, any last closing remarks about a Last of Us TV show? Um, uh, I'll just touch base on it one more time and say that I, I think the success for this show is going to come from remembering the heart of the game. Yeah. Uh, um, you can't just go into it treating it like another TV show, and you can't go in treating it like... Uh, a zombie show or a uh, ju- just an adventure show. You've got to remember where this core is, and that's I I would say the the heart of the whole thing comes from this father daughter dynamic. And if you lose that love, uh, I I just don't think that the show is going to stick the landing. Yeah, hundred percent. We don't want a Walking Dead version two or anything like that. You want something again from the heart. You know, and I again, I go back to what I said before having, you know, actual developers who develop the first and second game on there is going to be a major plus rather than having someone who thinks they know what the creator would have done and just going along with it as opposed to actually having the actual creator, you know, in there with you while, you know, pre-production is going on. Yeah. And I think speaking of developers, oh, I think that's God. an appropriate segue for the next portion Yes, absolutely. Um, You know, I was sent this video by a friend of mine, uh, you know, and the second when I viewed it, I sent it over to you, Dan. Um, You know, we were sort of on two case case about how they would go about developing up, you know, their games. But I think that we might have to have some uh, statements or sentiments about how Naughty Dog conducts their business. So I came across a video uh, where apparently there was a former developer from Naughty Dog who had left Naughty Dog for a while now. Um, And actually, I think for quite some time, had a gag order on him to not talk about, you know, what happened inside, you know, the Naughty Dog uh, complex. And apparently... uh, from what this developer was sort of tweeting out on Twitter um, in, in a few different posts, he talked about the idea and, and the reality that Naughty Dog not only overworks their, their employees when they're developing up a game, but there is the, the terminology of crunch, where they basically force you to work you know, more than is needed or more than would be desired. Um, not, uh, apparently not really caring about your health just as long as, you know, the game gets made or that you are on par with where you need to be. Um, and it's been drawing up a lot of concern, you know, Uh, my whole philosophy is, yes, we, we want a good game. Yes, we want an experience, but if it's at the expense of other people's health, that's going to be a little bit unsettling for me. So... I don't know, Dan. What are your sentiments? What do you think? Um, I mean, yeah. I, I, I would say that... So, so I'll, I'll, I'll spin off of that for a second. So from my understanding, based on what I, what, what I took from the article, yeah. it's, that it's not so much that they force you, it's that there's this expectation, this unwritten... Uh, understanding that uh, if other people are staying, you should probably stay. Yeah. Otherwise, you look like a dick. Yeah. Which, I, I, can, I can say uh, from some of my own experiences, uh, is not isolated to uh, Naughty Dog by any means. Yeah. It happens with all, all kinds of Everyone. employers. But yeah. Um, and so I, I get it, but again, there's also a threshold and you, you, it's gotta be fully voluntary. 
and people shouldn't feel pressured into doing it. If the if the game is coming down to the wire and you need people, um, you should ask. And if they say no, or uh, I'm I'm just so tired from the last ninety hours I worked on the game, I I, I need a day off. Okay. If they can push back The Last of Us for three months, they can push it back further. Yeah. Like, like we talked we talked in a previous episode that we were even a little surprised at, at the, the February release date. Yeah. Um, and then they pushed it back, and we went, okay. So, I mean, yeah, they still had some work to do. And now we're getting this story. Shit, if they held the game off till October... To not do that to their workers, um, first of all, we wouldn't even be talking about this because it wouldn't have been a problem. They would have spaced out the work. They would have gotten it done. They would have paced, paced it out better. Now, um, do you want to necessarily spread it out over another five months and continue to pay everybody for those five months? Probably not yeah. from, a business, from a business standpoint, but from a humanity. From a humanitarian standpoint, uh, it just seems like the right thing to do. Yeah. Instead of, especially for a company that's so highly regarded for the quality of their stories, you don't, like, I feel like you, if I were in charge of a company, and my company was looked at and admired, and people were like, yeah, that company is great, and then suddenly it came out, that I had a sweatshop full of children. <laughs> I could probably have not had a sweatshop full of children yeah. because the second that that comes out, suddenly your reputation takes a hit. Right. Um, and that's kind of the same thing here. Not to say that the developers are a sweatshop full of children, but they kind of are. Right. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like, the second when I saw this video, I felt like the, the gears in my brain kind of started going because I think you'll recall, um, you know, there were there was articles when Uncharted 4 was going to come out. And there was articles that um, I believe her name was Amy Henning. Um, yeah. I forget what she exactly did or what position she was in. A very essential role. Um, yeah. And she just sort of walked out you know, on the project, on Naughty Dog, and just kind of left. Um, and I can't remember if, it, if this was definitively said or if, it, or if it was inferred, but, you know, that developer who was sending out all these tweets said, you know, now you can see why so many people would walk out mid-projects because of crunch. Um, and again, that goes back to affecting the game, because I don't know about you, Dan, but I felt like, Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 was very consistent with a uh, soundtrack, with style, with all that. I felt like Uncharted 4 was as well, but there was there, there was a, a little twist to it. Where it wasn't it wasn't like the first three. There there was something different about it. Um maybe I'm just looking at it from an aesthetic or like from a, an audio perspective because the soundtrack, in my opinion, wasn't it wasn't, you know, Uncharted 1, 2, 3-esque. Yeah. Um, but I kind of always wondered about that. Like, you know, there's people walking out mid-project and you would kind of hear it like once every six months. Oh, you know, Bruce Straley all of a sudden has walked out. You know, one of the main components for the first Last of Us. Oh, he's gone. Oh, Amy Henning has walked out for, you know, mid-Uncharted 4 development. Now yeah, they're, when you start to have turnover... First of all, that frequently, but second of that scale, yeah. like you've got your top people going, eh, I'm out. <laughs> then then there, there's breadcrumbs. Right, yeah. Um, and, you know, it kind of becomes a domino effect because one person leaves and another person kind of sees all the BS and goes, eh, you know what, I'm going to probably join that other person so they leave, you know, and it kind of becomes and this domino mm -hmm. effect. Um, so, yeah, you know, I don't know, it's, it's kind of unsettling, you know, uh, yeah, like I said before, we want a great experience, you know, but 
going back to your point, if we can maybe backtrack this thing or, you know, extend it until a few months down the line, sure, I'll take it. You know, we waited this long. What's a few more months? Um, but, you know, I don't know. This, 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 this was kind of unsettling because when I, I, I told you before, you know, when we were talking about 2K, you have companies like Rockstar, you have companies like Naughty Dog, who they have a very high reputation. And then when something like this happens where their name is, you know, kind of tarnished, it's like, ugh, you kind of have to like tilt your head and go, oh, I don't know about this one, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know, that's just, you know... It's a shame that it has to come to that, and I hope that going forward, you know, whatever comes down, uh, comes out after Last of Us 2, I hope that it doesn't get the same treatment that these last few games got, but um, those are just my sentiments. Uh, you got any closing remarks about that? Um, I mean, I, I, I would say that my final remark on this is that you... You mentioned that you get these little whispers, these little these little tidbits that are like, "Hey, so maybe Naughty Dog is kind of squeezing blood from a stone," and uh, you don't necessarily want to look at the at, at this highly regarded game company and say, "Hey, hey, you guys are being a holes." Yeah. But but they're kind of being a holes. Yeah. So. I would hope from this story coming out that that's going to um, that's going to generate some change within the way that they operate, and they will either hire more people to alleviate that stress, or they will stretch their deadlines a little bit further. I mean, I, I, not to say that their people need to be more efficient, because I don't, I don't know. I, I'd like to think that they're that they're all there and they're focused and they're they're efficiently pumping out the their assignments. But uh, yeah, you, you need to you need to take care of your people because otherwise you're going to have this turnover and you're going to start to lose credibility when people go, Jesus Christ, we've heard for the last four games that they've had 55% turnover of their developers. Something's wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's tough. You know, we saw what happened, you know, with 2K, you know, kind of uh, with their last release and, you know, how they departed ways from Ukes and they kind of now have this reputation of putting out a bad video game. You know, not that Naughty Dog is on that level, not even close, but when you have stuff like this happening, it's like, hey, man, you get a few more things racked up, uh, people are going to start taking exceptions to that, you know? You're you're not going to exactly be, you know, what you once were in the eyes of all these diehard, you know, Uncharted and, you know, Last of Us fans. So, I don't know. Hopefully, this will facilitate some change, you know? I know that social media nowadays plays a big impact on how things are done. Um, hopefully they can turn this thing around for the better. Maybe, you know, after Last of Us 2, maybe sort of taking a break from developing anything um, until yeah. further notice. Use that time as sort of an introspective so that they can reevaluate their business practices so that they don't run into this going forward. Yeah, definitely. So there you are, guys. Uh Another episode, you know, dusted and done. Uh, we talked about uh, Last of Us TV show coming out sometime in the future. Uh, also talking about, you know, uh, what's been going on behind the scenes of development for these games. Um, we're only about, I want to say, 50 some odd days away from release, Dan, for Last of oh, Us 2. Yeah, um, thereabouts. I still need to call to get my shipping address adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you you better start doing it now, especially with everything that's going on. Everything now, there's high volume of calls going on everywhere. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, we'll just have to see where things go from here. Uh, I trust that we can maybe squeeze in another episode from now until before release. And then once release, 
Uh, gonna put that sucker into the console, play it, and we will have a lot to talk about afterwards. Hey, who knows? Maybe we can even uh, maybe we can even muster out some sort of uh, video uh, episode where we uh, we stream some of our gameplay. I would love that. Absolutely, one hundred percent. So, thank you, everyone who tuned in. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of BA Select Start. Uh, everybody stay safe and uh, always remember always save your progress and don't turn off the system we'll catch you guys next time